So to talk a little bit more uh, on apologetics in science, um, I found an excellent uh, reading plan by Chris Langham. He wrote a reading plan on the Uversion app called Bible Basics Explained Faith. All right, because because many atheists will attack the credibility of the Bible. Genesis is one of their favorite places uh, to critique because you know if you believe in evolution, how can you believe? in the God of the Bible that created everything. This is interesting, this is really cool. You can use science, uh, here's several examples of how you can use science to prove the Bible, okay? So let's start with the, the laws of science. At some point, space came into being, and matter, and energy. Conservation of mass, this is a scientific law. Matter can neither be created nor destroyed. So where did all the matter come from? There is no scientific law or test or observation that can validate that nothing created something. I'm not arguing for or against evolution here. This is before that. And the Big Bang Theory offers no scientific explanation for nothing becoming something. It had to happen. It had to. And yet it violates conservation of mass. Unless there is something outside of this universe that created the mass from nothing. Okay, on to the next law. Conservation of energy says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Again, energy could not have existed for eternity past, so it, there must have had been a beginning. That's based on number th numbers theory. We know the universe had a beginning from simple numbers theory. If you start counting at negative infinity, it is impossible to arrive at 2,000 something years. So there must be a start at some point time began. So going back to the conservation of energy, uh, the Big Bang offers no scientific explanation for nothing creating energy. It had to happen, and yet it violates the con conservation of energy, unless something outside the universe created the energy from nothing. Next law, entropy. The second law of thermodynamics tells us that order cannot come from disorder in a closed system. All things naturally move towards disorder. For example, things decay. They break down over time. Explosions create disorder. So if the Big Bang was an explosion, how could it have created order? It should have created just disorder. So the problem is the universe has a phenomenal amount of order in it. So where did all the order come from? Just look at the biology, the video I just talked about in biology. Where did all that incredible order and directedness go, come from? If the universe is a closed system, then the scientific laws insist that something outside of the universe must have added that order. So in order to be an atheist and still believe the laws of science, laws of science, then you must believe that the major scientific laws were broken at some point in time by nothing. For the atheist, nothing created time, space, matter, energy, and order. Now, science does not lead you to that conclusion. Scientists may say that, but science itself does not lead you to that conclusion. That conclusion violates scientific law. So believing it requires faith, which is why Frank Turek is saying it takes more faith to be an atheist than it does to believe in God and creation. That that and it would be faith in nothing. You would be saying you have more faith in nothing than you do in everything that we're seeing here. What if you trusted the scientific laws? Well, they all tell you that time, space, matter, energy, and order must come from something. They cannot create themselves. However, there is nothing in the known universe that can create them. So it would require something outside the known universe to create them. Now let's consider Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The beginning, that means time. God created time. God, something outside of the universe, created. The word in Hebrew literally means to make something from nothing. The heavens, which could be seen as space, and the earth, which is matter. So God, outside of the universe, created time, space, matter, and energy. Because that's what happened next. In Genesis 1 verse 3, God said, let there be light. That's energy. And the very next thing he said 
was he separated the light from the darkness. That's order. So here, you have time, space, matter, energy, and order. How is it that Genesis chapter 1, the very beginning, written well over 3,000 years ago, gives a direct explanation for the problems brought up by the laws of science? Some of those laws we have only figured out in the last 200 years. That is incredible. And it makes sense because God told man what to put in the Bible. If man wrote it down directly as God said, why shouldn't we know these things? Why not? And the, the incredible thing is it's taken us thousands of years to figure this stuff out. And we're only now proving that what the Bible says is correct.